In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Python and Docker to compile, deploy, and invoke a NeoSmart contract on the blockchain. On macOS, I start a terminal, and I use the Docker command to see that I have no running images. Links to the commands I use and sites that I reference are available in the description below. First, I run a Docker command that will start the image, which I already downloaded. Next, I run a command that will allow me to get shell access to the container. With shell access, I type clear, and then I type ls to show me the files in the current directory. Once I get to the NeoPython directory, I'm going to make a new directory called contract. Inside that directory is where I'll store the contracts that we write in this video. There's a helpful example contract at a certain URL. That URL is in the description below. I can use curl that URL dash o and then the name that I want to use to save the file and it will get that file from that location on the internet and save it to this docker container. Now that I have that example contract I'd like to edit it. What I'm going to do next is update the operating system inside the container and then install vim which is a regular text editor that will allow me to edit the contract. I'm going to make a copy of the contract we downloaded and call it 1.py. 1.py will be the file that I modify in order to create the contract we're using in this video. At this point I open the file 1.py for editing by typing vim space and then the name. Once vim is open I can use the up and down arrow keys to go to any line of the file. I use the arrow keys to navigate to the first line of the file after the import statements. I then type 1500DD, which will delete 1500 lines below the line that I'm currently on, or until the end of the file. I then press I to enter edit mode, and I can start by saying def main, which defines a function called main, which represents the first function that's run when this contract is invoked. I won't add anything else to this contract right now, because what I'd like to do is go get the public address of the wallet that's going to be running this contract, so that I can use that information in this contract in order to determine if the owner of the contract is the one running it. You'll see what that means in a moment. To exit Vim, I type the escape key to get out of edit mode. Then I type colon wq. The w stands for write the information to the file, and the q stands for quit the file. Once I've exited Vim, I'm going to navigate up one directory by typing cd space dot dot. I'll then download a wallet file from the internet which I'll be able to open using the Python interpreter. I download the wallet file with the curl command. The URL is in the description below. Then I navigate back to the contract directory and I start the Python interpreter. Once the interpreter is started, I can open the wallet file I just downloaded by typing the path to the wallet file, which starts with dot dot because it's in the directory one above this. Once the wallet file is open, I can rebuild the wallet to make sure it's synced and then type wallet to view the contents of the wallet. This wallet file we downloaded and opened is a pre-built wallet file. The password is always COZ. When viewing the contents of the wallet, I can see the public key of the wallet. This public key can be used inside of the contract as a way to identify who is running the contract. The contract that we're going to write will have this value hard-coded into it. Anytime the wallet with that public key runs the contract, the contract will be able to identify that a special individual is running the contract. This ability to identify who's running the contract can be used to grant that person special privileges that other users would not have when they run the contract. I type exit to leave the Python prompt and clear to get rid of the text. I use vim to open the contract file and I type i to enter edit mode. Then I can start entering the contents of the contract and press command v to paste the public key that I copied from the wallet. I finished typing out the contract. This contract contains an owner variable that is a byte array of the public key of one wallet. The result is true or false depending on if the wallet calling this contract matches that hard-coded public key. Then we have an if statement. If result is true, then we can say that the owner of the contract is the one calling it, and we return true. Otherwise, we return false. We could replace this condition with more sophisticated behavior 
if we wanted to do something special when the owner called the contract versus if someone else called it. Before deploying this contract file to the chain, we need to convert the .py file to a .avm file. We can do this by entering the Python interpreter and entering some commands that load the compiler and tell it to parse and compile the .py file. The resulting .avm file will be saved to the current directory. Now we start the Python prompt again. We open the wallet file, which has been hard-coded to own this contract. We use the Python prompt to import the compiled avm file. The command is import contract file name, then an empty string to indicate that this contract takes no arguments. Space 01 indicates the return value is a boolean. False false means that we don't need storage and we don't need something called dynamic invoke. The contract name will be test1 and we'll just press enter to avoid entering any other information. Then we'll be prompted for our password. We enter COZ. Now we wait for some feedback to tell us that the transaction of the contract deployment made it to the chain. It might take a few minutes, but once we get that feedback, we can type contract search and then a word from our title in order to find the contract that we deployed. What we need is the hash of this contract so that we can write the command test invoke, use that hash, and then enter any arguments that the contract might take. In this case, there are no arguments, so we can just push enter to run it. Since we're calling this contract from the wallet with a matching public key to the one we hard-coded in the contract, we get back a result of one, which represents true. We can also see in the two lines there from the execution that owner is caller was printed, which is the string that we had printed when check witness resulted in true. Now if we want to do a real invoke on this contract, which will create a transaction that appends to the blockchain, we could type our password at this point. Or if we press enter without our password, it will remain as simply a test invoke. Now I'd like to demonstrate what happens when a different wallet runs this contract we've just written. What I'll need to do here is create a new wallet called w2.wallet. Then I'll send some gas from the first wallet we created to this new wallet. Wallet2 will then attempt to invoke the contract using the gas that it has, and we'll see that the result is false. The function check witness will return false because the hard-coded public key does not match that of the calling wallet. You need gas to invoke a smart contract on the Neo blockchain. As we see here by inspecting this wallet we just created, it doesn't have any gas. So let's open w1.wallet, which does have gas, and send some over. The send command is send asset name, wallet address, amount. Instead of writing gas, we could write the name of a different asset, like Neo, if we wanted to send that instead. But we want to send 100 gas, so that's the command we use. After waiting for the transaction to make its way to the chain, we can then inspect to see if the gas made it. We see that this wallet contains 100 gas, so let's now invoke the contract. We use contract search and a word from the title to find the contract. We get the hash, the same as before. We use test invoke and the hash, and then press enter. This time we see that the result that was returned was a byte array of length 1. The element in the byte array is 0, which represents the value false. And so check witness returned false, indicating that the public key from this wallet did not match the one hard-coded into the contract. We've now seen how to use Python and Docker to create a private Neo blockchain where we can write, compile, deploy, and invoke smart contracts. These contracts can have behaviors such as detecting who is running them and performing different functionality based on that condition. All the links and commands that you need to follow along with this video are included in the description below. Thanks for watching.